Welcome to the tech zone, we on our tech flow And it's still a global market in case you didn't know So many guests we not trying to impress Just wanna pass off the info, you can do the rest See there's no escaping tech, it's part of our lives Keep every individual connected worldwide But all this innovation is more than entertainment It's people like you paving a new way every day So let your imagination run wild With all the things that you dream about Cause the tech zone is on now with Paul Amadeus Lane. Blah. Come and take a journey with me as we go through the land of technology. You'll never be alone. You'll be with Paul Amadeus Lane in the tech. Hello and welcome to this edition of the tech zone. Hello. Hello and welcome to this edition of the Tech Zone. I am Paul Amadeus Lane. I am so happy to have you on the show today. Remember, you can always connect with me, PaulAmadeusLane.com. This is ABC News Radio Keymet. Uh, you can check out the show on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Play. You can ask Google, hey, play Paul Amadeus Lane Tech Zone, and it will play it. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Now, last week I was at E3, just got back, and uh, I'm 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 not tired. I'm tired. <laughs> they had a lot of fun there. I caught up with some uh, some great people I know in the video gaming uh, industry. Uh, my friends over at the ESA uh, did a fantastic job, especially when it comes uh, for those who are disabled. Um, just an, an awesome awesome company. They are the ones that put on E3. Maybe you're not aware of that, but find out more about the, the ESA and some of the great things that, that they are doing. If you missed the show that I did from E3, um, you can always check it out on the podcast. We interviewed uh, ones from the Children's Miracle Network about their Extra Life Foundation. GameStop is one of their they're major contributors. They have this awesome booth, and you probably uh, heard me talk about it. You'll be able to see the video of it soon. We're editing that, but you heard the audio portion on last week's show. But it was uh, an amazing, amazing, um, amazing ride for E3. So what I wanted to do on this edition of the show is have an E3 recap with one of my colleagues in the video gaming industry who normally would be with me at E3, but didn't get a chance to make it this year. So I want to get his take from afar about what he uh, felt about E3 from a distance. We're also going to be joined by a CEO in the assistive and adaptive technology field. She herself has a disability, has a challenge, but she used uh, this opportunity to help make life better uh, for members of the uh, disabled community like myself. And she's going to be joining me on uh, the next uh, uh, segment of the show. So you don't want to miss that very inspirational uh, video with an amazing, amazing person. So without any further delay, let's bring on my first guest, my good friend. Joining me right now is my brother from another mother, my homie from the NYC, Tony Polanco, video game editor, gamer, all around great guy, Dominican Dominator himself. What's going on, bro? How you doing? I'm great, man. How you been, Paul? Man, I am fantastic. Fresh back from E3. I missed you, bro, because, you know, every year for the past, what, four or five years, we met up at E3 and hung out and talked about video gaming and things like that, man. So so you were missed, man. Yeah, that, man, I've heard that from a bunch of people because, yeah, I've been to the past six E3s nonstop. And this year, you know, I decided to take a little break and, you know, I, I'll be honest, though, I don't regret that because this year was a little weird, which we're going to get to. Um, but, yeah, I you know everybody's like, yo, yo, we miss you. We miss you, you know, because, again, like, like I guess I'm a fixture at E3. Everybody's used to me, you know. You so, are, man. you know, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, in that press room, man, it's not the same until you hear this big booming voice come in. Yo, man, what's going on? What's good? What's good? I miss that, man, in the press room, man. You have no idea. I kept looking around and be like, 
I felt like, you know, the Avengers Endgame, like, hey, Paul, on your left. And I was going to see you come through the door, man, like you was playing with me, man. But but you definitely were missed. Yeah, man. No, I'll, I'll be back next year. I think next year. Because the thing is, you know, this year, you know, and we'll get into it. Uh, it was, I called it like a holding pattern year, you know, since the new console is coming next year. People were kind of holding back a little bit. I even heard that, um, and I want to get your take on this, that press attendance was down almost like 50% this year, which is very interesting, you know. Well, you know, the way that I look at it, Tony, you know, like when uh, we would hang out in the press room, you know, that they, they give us lunch, right? And this was the first time, man, where they had box lunches left over. And you know, man, from past experience, you know, after about, what, 10 minutes in that press room, the lunches be gone, man. But this time, it was like half of them there, man. So you're right. It was press uh, attendance was where, down. Yeah, it's it's interesting. And I think that just goes to, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of factors. Not only because some of the games... You know, we're kind of, even though there were good games and we're going to get to them, you know, uh, it just seems like a lot of the games that were shown weren't really like super crazy like they were before. And let's just address the elephant in the room. Sony wasn't there. That's a big reason for a lot of people. You know, I know that was a big factor for me. That wasn't the only factor for me, but that was one of them. It's like, because usually Sony is like the thing to go to at E3. They, they have the biggest announcements, the biggest presence, but. You know, them not being there it made a lot of people go, yeah, you know, I think I'll take this year off, you know. And it's kind of interesting how I wasn't the only one. There's a bunch of my, you know, my colleagues I talked to, they just decided to stay home too, you know. So you tell me about that press room situation is very interesting because you're right. Usually those lunches, they, they go like that. Just the fact that they're still around lets you know that presence really was like cut. Yeah, it was it was something else. And, and, and before we delve into the news of the games... Let's talk about our, our love of libations. Let's talk about our love for beer. And, and I know you you uh, really um, enjoy having a beer like I do. Yes. And 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 before before I bought you on, you and I kind of kind of talked about like our past and how we used to drink beer and and some of the beer we used to drink uh, uh, malt liquor. So what was your favorite malt liquor of all time? I have two. Okay, you see, you're making me pick one now, man, because I had two. I loved, and I'm going to use the the actual names because people don't know, you know, what we used to call them. So Old English, right? That was the first one, O-E, you know, and then Cool 45, baby, Billy D, <laughs> you know? And I, like I was telling you before, the reason for that is it was economic. You know, I was young, out of college, right? And sometimes they're in college, too, you know, and you <laughs> buy a 40 for like less than a dollar, you you were straight. You didn't, have, you know, because dudes used to buy six packs and stuff. I'm like, no, I just buy one forty and I'm good. You know, man, I used to, you t- like that conversation we had took me back, son. Like just drinking more liquor like crazy. I can't do that nowadays. My body can't handle like that. I still love drinking beer, but I I very I, I drink in moderation now. You know, like and I only drink sushi. Before I used to drink just cause. You know, but. Man, malt liquor. I think I'm gonna have to revisit the old days just for you, Paul. I go down to the to the bodega down the block, son. Buy me a OE. I'll be chilling, man. <laughs> and, and, and you know, you know what's funny when you said Billy D. Now you and I know what that means. Now uh, for some of the millennials out there who may not know what it means, see, back in the days, Lando Calrissian himself used to do a commercial. Billy D. Williams for Colt 45. And it was like the smoothest commercials you ever seen because Billy D. would be there just chilling all like like decked out. And he would tell people, don't let the smooth taste fool you. And he was like, <laughs> he was like, cool, man. And, and that, that made me want to drink some Colt 45 and some Odie. Yeah, but, man. But let me tell you something. The only way to enjoy malt liquor the correct way is drinking it how. Tony, let me see if you know it. Oh, the correct. Ooh, this is interesting because, like, I usually should just actually. I mean, you know, we would get it, and I was, actually I just popped it open and drank it. Is I didn't know there was a ritual. Like, it, what is the correct way? You're putting me on right now. Okay, here we go. You got to drink it with a brown paper bag around it. That's the only way. Oh to man, enjoy yeah, it, right? yeah, bro. Right. See, that was such an <laughs> integral part of it. I didn't even realize that. You know, yeah, you you have to drink it with the brown paper bag. Yeah. You know, you're right about that. And you and, know, and and that's how you know somebody is truly down. Like if they say they drink malt yeah. liquor, you ask them, how did you drink it? If they like, uh, I took it out of the bag. No, 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 no. No, you're not down with drinking malt liquor. You got to leave it in a brown paper bag. Yeah. And sometimes what you would do, what we would do, we would buy it, leave it in a bag, put it in the freezer for a little bit so it can get nice and old and chilled. Because you know, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it takes a minute to kill a 40. So you don't want, mm-hmm. it, you don't want it to get warm towards the bottom. So you put it in that brown paper bag, you put it in the freezer for a minute, man. You set for, for a minute. 
Yeah, man. Yeah, bro. That takes me back. But it's funny, like, again, the, the whole paper bag, that was such an integral part. I didn't realize, like, yeah, like, you you take it off? Like, what? Yeah. Really? Okay. So that's a rookie. Then. Okay, you know? They, 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 they yeah, that is a rookie mistake. Like, yo, bro, like, because the thing is, the understanding, I'm going to keep it real right now. Mm-hmm. You got to understand with the cops, because you're not supposed to be drinking that stuff outside, right? Pretty much. So they're like, listen, you can do what you're going to do. Just keep the bag on it. So we always just had it on, man. Like, that's interesting. And you're right about the, the cooling process. That's another thing. Because even at the store, when you have them behind the counter or whatever, not behind the counter, behind the whatever, it's always a little warm, you know? And, you and yeah, it takes a while to drink that, even though by the end you're still drinking warm beer. But yeah. it's all good. It's part of the, it's part of the experience. And, 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 you know, and, you know, if you really wanted to have a good old time, what we used to do, we used to get that that Odie or that St. Ives or that or that Billy D's. Man, St. Ives, bro. And, and what, what we would do, we would go get some Thunderbird and make our own little boiler maker. That was way back in the days, man. Oh, yeah, man. But, yeah, but in case you guys don't know, yeah, me and Paul don't rock like that anymore. We just no, reminisce no. about the old days, bro. Yes. We can't, we're can't. we both old now. We don't be doing that, yeah, man. I've been, dra- yo, I've been dragged ball liquor in, like, over a decade or more, man. It's, that's how long it's been, man. Yeah, it's been about about almost uh, 20 years for me since the last time I downed it. But And uh, with the Thunderbird, we used to put, like, the Kool-Aid packages in there. So oh, Wow. <laughs> so we'll have another show talking about Thunderbird and, and all just that. that yeah, just that. Bird. <laughs> Next time we'll talk about Cisco too. All right, sure. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> our boon man. farms. Our boon farms, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Here. Yo, that's crazy. This is a tech show. We talk about beer. And <laughs> hey, you know, you know. But hey, sometimes we need that to to get through events that we cover. But talking about E three, man, what what was your what was your take of of the whole E three experience? You know, we kind of talked about it about press attendance being down, but you watching it remotely from the NYC. Uh, what was kind of like your biggest takeaways from it? Man, yeah, like I said, the biggest takeaway for me is just how kind of low key the the show was. And it, it's hard to explain because it was still a big deal just because like so many game announcements and all that came out of it. But the, the, it just felt like something was missing, you know. And I think that Sony presence was definitely something. But yeah, even even from people who were there, like you, you like, yeah, the show was good, but some some was off, you know. And I think a lot of people from home felt that way. I know some people from home still liked it, you know. But for me, I was like, yeah, some something's off here, man. Um, it, and again, it, it felt to me like, and I didn't attend this E three, um, but it felt like E three two thousand twelve, like the year right before. The new systems drop, you know, so it kind of had that we're, we're anticipating something, but we know they're not going to show it yet. <laughs> you know, so we got to just make do with whatever uh, they have for us, you know, to offer. So, yeah, very strange year, you know, very. And, and, and again, even though I was home, I still covered it. I, I gave we, we did live streams on my podcast throwdown of all the events and stuff, gave our uh, impressions live. And that was cool, but even then we were like, eh. And even like our post E three coverage, we kind of struggled a little bit to how to cover it. It's mm-hmm. like mm, this year was really weird, dude. What, what's your take on it as somebody who was there, like on the ground floor? Well, you know, you you really felt the difference of of Sony not not being there. You know, I'm I go into the the West Hall. You know, I'm used to seeing Sony's big booth there. I'm used to going back into the to the VIP press area to be able to get me some snacks and to play the games, you know, it, it was weird. And when you went on the floor, um, you and I both being handicapped, you know how hard it was for us to get around the floor, right? This time yeah. it was no, no, no problem at all, man. So I guess that was the cool thing about it. But, but here's kind of like the dynamic that, that I, that I noticed there, there was a lot of, a um, lot more indie developers there in the Indicate. They had a bigger presence there, and it just wasn't ones who were talking about console games that they were um, developing. But it was like apps. Um, there were other things, and and with the uh, the big Google announcement, you know that that kind of that that, that kind of had a had had the the legs of their own at this E3. So that was kind of thing. But I, but you can definitely. Uh, look at Sony not being there, but then there were other things there, like the Children's Miracle Network was there. You and I both having health challenges. It was it was refreshing to see what they were doing to bring games to kids who are sick, who are disabled, and getting them to games. So you know, it was a it was an all around good experience, but 
it just wasn't the same without without the big dog being there. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. You know, and, and I'm I don't know, you know, and I'll, I'll just say this: I think it's a good opportunity. Uh, the thing is, these days, it, it, you kind of don't need E3 as much as you used to, just because. Think about like this, right? Right before E3, uh, Sony dropped the new Death Stranding trailer. Right, that joint got seven million hits. This was without E3. You know, like basically, and you could have a lot of these conferences on their own at their own time. And it will still generate the same hype, right? One of the biggest moments of this year's E3 was the Microsoft conference where Keanu Reeves showed up, right? Everybody lost their mind. You could have still had that same impact on their own without E3. So, you know, it's the, the you know, and I hate to say this as somebody who, you know, has been to E3, who used to dream about going to E3 back in the day. It's like the, the conference is not really as relevant, not because of the content of the conference, but just because the world has changed, right? Like E3 is not the only show in the world anymore, right? We got we got PAXs, we got CES, we got all these things, and we have the internet, right? Before E3 was necessary, it was the one place, one time a year where every game company came together and all the journalists came together and reported on everything, right? You don't need to do that anymore, you know? So that's why it has shifted from being a trade show, which is what it's always been, to a consumer show slash trade show kind of right. Um, they're still trying to work that out, or whatever. But yeah, I think it's just the the um, the, the times are changing. And E three, I know there's a lot of people that, that say E three is going to go away. I don't. I'm not really. I don't really believe that. But E three is definitely changing. It's it's already changed. If you think about it, you know. So I think that's what's going. On. There's some weird kind of growing pains as to. You know, with, with EC trying to figure out what exactly he wants to do. But, yeah, I think the, just the, the big hits are just the fact that you don't need one conference every year to tell you everything when companies can just tell you things on their own time and still be just as effective. That's true. And uh, I know um, some of the conversation was centered around Stadia and the, the streaming uh, uh, gaming. And I know I know you have a really interesting take as far as uh, streaming gaming because I know even when, when PlayStation Now came out, you know, about – just the the band with I know you and I have played together game together with uh, PlayStation Share and sometimes there was some lag because of the uh, the internet service out there. But do you think that that Stadia uh, will, will be a, a major player? Because let's face it, it has a lot of the 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 gaming uh, console manufacturers scared. So now they're trying to do a lot of streaming. I don't know if you heard about Nintendo Switch. Um, it's trying to have their own version of a of a Stadia type streaming gaming. Uh, what do you think? You think this is going to be a game changer? Um, I think streaming games is going to be, you know, the future, but it's not going to be there right now. It's going to happen in our lifetime, obviously. It's going to happen. But right now, the biggest hurdle is the infrastructure. Specific, I'm specifically talking about the West here, you know, America. Um, uh, you know, ISPs, you know, the, 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 the bandwidth or whatever, it's not there yet. Like, if you live in a big city like me, you, you know, we, you know, you live in L.A., I live in New York, we're going to be okay. We could probably play that pretty well. But if you're out there in the middle of the country, things might be a little spotty, you know. So I think right now, you know, they're in their growing phase. But at the same time, I could see in, like, Perhaps, and, and by the way, I'm just throwing a number out there. Don't don't you know, pin it on me, you know. But it's like I can see in like 15, 20 years, like it that being the norm. Because think about like this, right? Let's say you're a kid, you know, you grew up with nothing but a small little box that plays every game you could want at any time you want. You're gonna look at consoles like, yo, why were you guys even playing this? You, you mean you have to plug this into your TV and then put a <laughs> cartridge in or a CD in and play it. What? Like, you know, so I think, you know, cause right now it's a little bit hard for us to kind of understand it because of the way we grew up with gaming, but I think future generations, it'll be like the only way to game. Right. But, there's hurdles, like I said. Got to got the bandwidth. Uh, you got the latency. I know uh, Stadia is working on that, trying to reduce that latency. But no matter what, there's always going to be latency. But at the same time, it's you know it's all about perception, right? Like even if there's because there's always going to be latency, but if you can't perceive it, does it really matter? And if you grew up with gaming like that, are you even going to notice it? You know. And I think these companies, let's just say hypothetically speaking. We do move where, yeah, we will move to, uh, you know, all streaming future, right? I'm pretty sure companies will try to tailor their games in a way to compensate for that lag that's going to be there naturally, you know? Um, not Everything's not going to be perfect. Even before um, E3, there was a big thing that happened with Google that everything just shut down for like an hour. It got me very mad because I'm trying to write and stuff on Google Docs. Everything just was down, you know? But 
these things are going to happen. So, yeah, like I said, it's going to be the, the future, but it's not going to be there just yet. Like, this console generation is still going to happen. People don't need to worry about that. Because there's some people that are very vehemently against this stuff. I'm like, why are you fighting it, bro? It's going to happen, yeah. you know? But uh, you just got to... Let, let it do its thing basically but but just the fact that you said even nintendo tried to do streaming that already lets you know they're taking sadia serious yeah because we know man, nintendo they don't move real quick you look even the they don't man even the like, dinosaurs bro <laughs> even, even like when it comes to accessible accessible gaming uh, uh settings and everything you know but uh when it when it comes to you brought up a very good point yeah like when we were growing up we had like albums cassette tapes cds and now we're streaming. Here's the thing that I hope that we address in in this country, and that is our 5G infrastructure. You know, for uh, America to be so advanced when it comes to technology, why in the world do we have these slow internet speeds? If you go to go to China, if you go to Japan, you go to all these other countries out there, their speed just dwarfs ours, and it just frustrates me that. They cannot get it together here, and I know a lot of the a lot of the uh, hullo, hullabaloo about why it's not being done. But get it done. I mean, what's the problem? You know, get it done. We need the high bandwidth. It just helps out with education, and it helps out with gaming, helps out with processing data. You name it. We just need to get it done. So hopefully, hopefully, we'll get that five G infrastructure going up really good. Because when it comes to like five G, everything can go wireless. So people who live in uh, in Montana, people who live in parts of the rural parts of the United States, wirelessly with with 5G, man, they'll be able to to roll with this and in the big cities like we have, man, and game with us. Yeah, no, you're right, and I think it happened eventually, but it is frustrating that all these other countries, you know, have it better than we do. And it's funny because you know, normally I would say like, oh yeah, of course China, uh, no, of course Japan and Korea have it good because they're small countries. China's a huge country. You know, and they have it better than us. So we don't really have an excuse. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I really can't say it's probably a lot of political red tape going on. I'm not going to get into politics here, but, yeah, there's a lot of nonsense going on behind the scenes that's kind of preventing it. You know, a lot of people, not, not to get too preach, a lot of people with, like, old mentalities trying to keep some of this stuff behind, I feel. You know, but I think we will get it together eventually when we're just when it's just embarrassing. You know, yeah. when people get so embarrassed, like, yo, OK, we need to get our stuff together now. This is ridiculous. You know, but I think it's going to happen because you're right. It's like Internet. It's you know, it's a commodity. Everybody need you can't live without the Internet now. You know what I'm saying? So everybody needs to get him. And, and uh, you know, people in charge, I don't, you know, whoever's in charge needs to you know, fix that. Well said. So what were some of the games that like? That blew you away the announcements at, at E3 that kind of, uh, you know, made you feel giddy inside. Man, yo, okay, I'm going to start with the main one. And this is just me personally because a lot of people don't even care about this, right? Because I, back in the day, I was a huge Sega Saturn fan, right? Um, a lot of people don't like the Saturn, especially here in the West. I loved the Saturn, right? I, I actually liked it over the PlayStation, the original one, right? And one of the games that was on it was Panzer Dragoon, right? They had Panzer Dragoon, Panzer Dragoon Zoo, the, the sequel. Then Panzer Dragoon Saga, one of the greatest RPGs of all time, right? So I knew that... You know, because a couple months ago they announced that they were going to remaster the original two games, right? So uh, during the Nintendo Direct, they showed the remastered version of Panzer Dragoon, the original. Yo, man, I lost my mind on stream. I'm screaming. I'm cursing. I, I lost it, man, because, you know, it it's just one of those games that just reminds me of my childhood. And I'm not even talking about deep childhood. I was like 15 at the point, you know, but just seeing that, man, at the Nintendo Direct, I lost my mind like if you saw me on twitter that day for two hours straight i'm like yo panzer dragoon panzer dragoon nintendo 1e3 you know so that's one of the things a lot again a lot of people don't care about that but for me that was such a big highlight right so that's one um the second one after and this one's a little bit surprising because i a lot of, i know a lot of people have been hyped for this game i haven't exactly because i like the original final fantasy 7 remake right You've, ever since they announced it, i'm like yeah hey, that's cool that you get it but i wasn't really like enthused about it because i you know i was okay with the original right but seeing it at this E3, bro, I'm ready, man. Like, it looks so crisp, so clean. The music is dope. The, the voice acting, the, the character models, man. And it, it, I like the fact that, because one of my big worries was because they're, they, they're going from a turn-based combat system to a real-time combat system. I was like, I don't know about that, because I, I, even though I know a lot of people these days don't like turn-based because they feel it's slow, I like turn-based because you have to, like, really think and strategize, think a couple moves ahead, right, with, you know, action 
all you got to do is just whack stuff until it dies, you know. But this time they showed me that, you know, you could have your live combat, plus you could slow things down and really strategize. So that was really dope, you know. And then um, the other one was uh, Cyberpunk. It's another game I've been a little bit on the fence. Um, and it, that may sound weird to some people because, you know, everybody loves CD Projekt Red, The Witcher. I never actually played The Witcher. Those games have always been way, way long, you know, and I've always had other games to play. But seeing this, I'm like, yeah, that looks really, really cool, man. And then, of course, the whole reveal with Keanu Reeves was really, really fun. So, I th- yeah, I think, I think you know, I mean, there's a couple other games, but those are the main three that, that stick out for me. What about you? You know, what? I, I would have to agree with you. You know, um, you and I have similar tastes of games, um, so I would have to agree with you. I was hoping that we saw a little bit more games announced, you know, just because, you know, we're getting into that season um, where they normally make announcements and when games are going to be released. But, you know, you brought up a very good point about how companies don't need to do that at E3 no more. They can just put out a blast, put out an announcement. They can uh, do a live stream exclusive. So um, I'm just... You know what? You know I'm a big Star Wars guy. You, you know I am. You know. Yeah, I am. that's right. Yes, yes, so, yes. So, so you know, um, when uh, when EA showed the the new Star Wars, you know, I was like, wow. So my question to you: Do you think it's gonna be better than uh, the last one? Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> you know, I'm just being honest, right? Because the last one, uh, the the last two games were Star Wars Battlefront, right? And they're mostly you know multiplayer type of games. Like the second the second one had a story, but a little bit of a story. This one. You know, it's funny about it. it's Jedi Fallen Order. They're going to give you what you want. It's just a story driven Star Wars experience because that why do you watch Star Wars? You watch it for the story, you know, so it's kind of cool. They're going back that it kind of reminds me of the Force Unleashed from back in the day. Oh, I love um, that. But just that was my favorite yeah. game. Favorite game has that feel to it. They showed um, I, I believe. Yeah, they showed that at, at EA play, which is interesting. EA didn't have a proper press conference but they also did have a press conference very weird was going on with ea but they showed about 15 to me it like the yeah the gameplay looked really cool like i will say that graphics are a little you know suspect mm-hmm. but the gameplay looked cool the characters look cool you know so I, i'm totally down for that you know i, I know that's going to be a, a big seller i believe that's coming this year too uh this year is going to be actually that is coming this year it's coming a week after death stranding i'm like man november is going to be insane bro yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, but Star Wars is going to be, I think it's going to have a huge impact this, uh, this fall. Yeah. Yeah. I do too. And, and what we're going to do is, uh, we'll, uh, we'll hook up again, uh, uh, real soon to talk about how, uh, they're trying to introduce legislations to make, uh, loot boxes and everything, uh, uh, you know, go away in these games. And, you know, I know you and I have some, some takes about that and, and just, uh, you know, our viewpoint on it, so we're gonna make sure we get together and talk about that because we can spend about an hour <laughs> on something. Like yeah, that. yo, real, real quick, it's funny you bring up loot boxes. One of the reasons we're talking about loot boxes the way we are right now is because of the controversy that happened with the last Star Wars game, yeah. right? Battlefront Two. So, yo, when this game got announced, Jedi Fallen Order, the first thing they said is like, "No loot boxes." Yeah. It's the first thing they said, man, because yeah. they know people don't want to deal with. It. Here's a, you know, I know we're gonna talk about loot boxes like another episode, but quickly, what I find interesting about loot boxes is. Loot boxes have existed in video games for years, right? But you know where? Mobile phones, right? Not, yep. As soon as they put it in a big game, Star Wars, that's when people were like, what is this? <laughs> you yeah. know? So kind of interesting how Star Wars kind of brought that to light. But at the same time, not, not to get too deep into it, now it's kind of bringing Uncle Sam down on the video game industry. And that's something we should not want. Like, we need to regulate ourselves. We don't, we don't want Uncle Sam doing it because yeah. it's going to be some nonsense. If you guys remember, you know, if comic book fans specifically, the, the whole um, comic book authority, you know, Frederick Wortham, I don't want to see that happen to games, man. You know, because we're doing really good things for games. Now. I don't want them to see, I don't want them to be censored, you know, because of some, you know, government people that don't even understand what games are. You Tell know? me about it. You're going to have them regulate something they don't even play you know well you know yeah. maybe there are some congressmen who are around our age and everything who are gamers and hopefully they can speak truth to power and say no this is how but you get some you get some old curmudgeon up there who 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 thinks video game is the devil you know you can imagine what they're going to say about it so but yeah it's going to be a pretty interesting conversation but before i let you go the dominican dominator how can ones continue to connect with you all right man so you can follow me on twitter at Romu Death, that's R O M U D E T H, and in my bio, I got links to all my stuff. That's Geek.com, Tom's Guide, The Coalition, and then of course my podcast Throwdown. And you can check us out 
every Thursday and Sunday night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern live. Thursday is the show, kind of like this one where we talk about general news, and then Sundays we answer fan questions. Right now we're going to go back to our regular formatting because, you know, obviously we switched things over to E3 uh, this week. So now E3 is over, so we're going to go back to our normal formatting. And, uh, yeah, man, so, again, just follow me on Twitter. I'm always there. I'm always willing to you know answer questions as long as you're civil, <laughs> you know. And yeah, that's that's that, man. All right, my brother from another mother. You take care of yourself. Always great to catch up. I look forward to have you on again as we tackle loot boxes and congressional oversight when it comes to that. So until then, my friend, you take care of yourself. Peace out. A huge shout out goes to my man with the master plan, Tony. Polanco, yes, he and I, we went there. We talked about malt liquor, yeah. And if you have any malt liquor stories, do me a favor. Like, hit me up on on Twitter or Facebook or comment on the episode, whether you're watching it, uh, whether you are uh, listening to it. Let us know <laughs> if you have any malt liquor stories. And don't forget, uh, uh, Tony and I on the next show, we're going to tackle loot boxes and um, you may not be familiar with what the term is and what it means, but it looks like the U.S. government is uh, going to weigh in on loot boxes. So we're going to have a show to uh, uh, describe what it is and uh, why it's something that, that we all should should be aware of. All right, when we get back, we're going to have a very inspirational interview with a, a person who has some challenges, but she's making sure that she's using her platform uh, to help life uh, go a little easier. A huge shout out to my friend, Tony Polanco. And yes, we went there. We talked about malt liquor. And if you have any uh, stories about malt liquor, please either comment on the episode. Uh, visit me at paulamadeuslane.com. Uh, drop me a personal note. I'll even share it on the air about your malt liquor stories. Yeah, we went there. And Tony's going to be joining me next week, too. We're going to do a special on loot boxes in the gaming industry and what that means since the U.S. government is trying to uh, maybe even regulate that. So we'll, we'll chat about that uh, on our next show. Coming up, we're going to be joined by a very inspirational interview, a person who is disabled, but she's also a CEO, and her company has created some assistive technology that's really going to be a game changer out there. And I'm so happy to have her on coming up after this break. We'll be right back. In this world of technology, things are ever changing, rearranging. You need someone to help you out. I know someone who can. Come and take a journey with me as we go through the land of technology. You'll never be alone. You'll be with Paul. I'm a dead slain in the tech zone.